Hey, what's up guys? This is Kitty Cloudy and right now I'm pretty excited because yesterday I ordered the OnePlus 8 Pro for myself and today morning this arrived at my doorstep magically. It's not magically, Amazon just delivered it really quick. But yeah, I'm really excited to have this because this is my first flagship in years and this is going to be a huge upgrade from my Redmi Note 7 Pro. So I'm pretty happy with the purchase. But in this video, I'll be sharing my first 48 hours with this device. Uh, sharing all the experience and all the nitty gritty details uh, starting with right now which is r0 where i unbox this beast and you guys see it so yeah without further ado let's just jump into the unboxing so here we have the package itself it's a really tall box i have to say for a phone with all of these red aesthetics going all around so I kind of like that and if you take a look at the back you can see that it's the glacial green base variant and also that it was manufactured in India so that's pretty cool but yeah I'm just gonna skim through these stuff it's just a normal phone unboxing uh, you get the phone itself wrapped in this frost plastic jacket and opening it and holding it for the first time I literally just went oh my god yeah now rest of the packaging is pretty standard although you do get some cool looking paperwork which is super unnecessary but you do get some really cool stickers and the 30 watt power adapter and the usb cable and i wish this usb cable was type c to type c and not type a to type c but that's okay now after unwrapping everything i put my primary sim card which is uh, geo 4g from my redmi note 7 pro and went through the setup process and restored all my apps from my google account and as we're into Oxygen OS, I'm going to remove some stuff and populate my home screen into a specific way with my apps, like how I'm used to, which includes Instagram, WhatsApp, Google Keep, YouTube Studio, YouTube app, uh, something called Letterboxd for movies, Infinity, which is a Reddit client, and also Snapchat, and Twitter and Spotify occupy my app tray. So yeah, there goes the what's on my phone video. Also, I went ahead and enabled Quad EG Plus in the phone resolution along with 120Hz in the settings. So I have maxed out everything. Also, I noticed that the pre-applied screen protector was in a pretty bad condition. It had bubbles in it and it was very clearly misaligned. So I had no option, but that felt really satisfying. So yeah, I guess now everything is set up and working perfectly. I'm ready to use it as a daily driver and I'll see you guys after 24 hours. So right now it's 5 p.m. of the 17th of June, which means that I've used the OnePlus 8 Pro for a little more than a day now. And my usage has been pretty basic, like normal stuff, social media, browsing and some content consumption. So yeah, basic stuff. And I also changed my wallpaper to complement the green color really well. So yeah, that was neat. But overall, right off the bat, my experience using the OnePlus 8 Pro has been very pleasant. I've been absolutely loving every second of using this device. But in a fanboying, uh, getting into the specifics and the details of what makes this phone so great. Well, let's start with the size of the phone itself. Now, when I first held it in my hand, it actually felt a lot smaller than I thought it would be. Like, this is a 6.78 inch display and in my mind, before getting it, I pictured it to be really huge. Like comparing it to my Redmi Note 7 Pro, it's identical in terms of width. It's just a tad taller, so I guess that makes sense. Uh, but either way, uh, one-handed usage has been totally fine. I could, I can type without a problem. Just reaching the corners is a little bit of an issue, but that's just fine. That's how big phones are. But overall, this, in terms of size, this hasn't been a problem for me. This is not too big for me. It's just ideally the perfect size. Now moving into the actual display itself, that 6.78 inch AMOLED monstrosity. Yeah, it's really good. Like really, really good. Like I'm not even kidding. 120 hertz, I mean, how can I describe it? It's, it's, just, it's just something else you need to experience it yourself. Uh, but other than that, HDR playback on Netflix and Prime Video has made a major difference to the video quality. And also using the uh, in-screen fingerprint reader for the first time was also a really good experience. It actually felt pretty cool. 
uh, but yeah i'll be making a separate uh, video on the display itself of the uh, one plus eight pro so i stay tuned for that and i'll be elaborating more on the display in that specific video but using this device uh, in the daily and what constantly amazes me every moment is the performance like Snapdragon 865 and the 8 gigs of RAM are really doing the work. But what's more important though is the software optimization. Oxygen OS is so, so good. Like it's so clean. I mean, I'm a kind of a person, I have a problem. I am kind of addicted to pixel related UIs. And for the past four or five years, I've used nothing but stock Android through ROMs or actually using a Nexus or a pixel device. And that's my solution to everything. I bought the Redmi Note 7 Pro, MIUI, I don't like it. My solution, Flash ROM. It's kind of a problem, I'm not even kidding. But yeah, Oxygen OS is pretty much every bit as clean as stock Android, if not cleaner. Yes, it has its own style and UI, uh, which I can kind of respect and get used to. And there are a bunch of new features I'm exposed to, like pocket mode and expanded screenshots, things which I missed in the Pixel user experience. So that was also a good addition. Also, I got a software update and I installed it last night and I got to find out that this supports uh, the AB partitioning or seamless updates as they call it. So applying the update did barely took any time. So that's also pretty good. So yeah, Oxygen OS has been pretty sweet. And that's all I had to say for day one. Uh, I'll see you again after a couple more hours of usage. Uh, so it has been two full days and nights almost uh, of me using the OnePlus 8 Pro and finally I'll be wrapping up with a few of my miscellaneous thoughts. Firstly, I wanted to address the hole punch cutout on the OnePlus 8 Pro. It did not bother me at all except for in a few apps which aren't optimized properly. And the fact that I forgot to say it yesterday actually says speaks volumes about how unobtrusive it is. For some people it might be an annoyance but I was coming from a notch and a hole punch is kind of same if not better. So yeah the hole punch was not a distraction at all. Next as you might have known I've been, I've been using the included plastic case uh, for safety but yeah it has given me a pretty good grip and I just wanted to be careful with it but the problem is that it has collected a bunch of dust and uh, fingerprints and dirt. Uh, which makes it harder for me to use it in the long term. Also, I know a friend of mine who has a OnePlus 7T and he was using his uh, included plastic case, but unfortunately, a couple of months later, he this came apart and tore in half. So yeah, I'll be definitely getting a new case if I am pretty serious about protection. I also took a bunch of calls and notice that this phone supports voice over Wi-Fi. Now, I know it's not a big deal or anything, but it's just silly of me to point it out. But yeah, it was nice for me to use uh, voice over Wi-Fi for the first time. And uh, it shows up uh, over here at the top as a logo, which is nice. And also it, it worked pretty seamlessly. I did not notice a difference in quality, uh, but yeah, it worked pretty seamlessly considering that is I'm using Geo on my phone and not Geo Fiber uh, on my Wi-Fi. My Wi-Fi ISP is uh, SpectreNet. But yeah, everything worked out pretty seamlessly and it was fun to try out voice over Wi-Fi. I also took a couple of photos, not a whole lot, with the quad camera setup of the OnePlus 8 Pro. And in my limit testing, it turned out to be awesome. Uh, colors were great, sharpness is on point. And what really surprised me was the amount of bokeh from the primary camera. And it's really, really sharp, even at the telephoto lens. And yeah, having three focal lengths really was useful at my disposal. You can definitely do some pretty creative things if you have three set of focal lengths. So that was pretty nice. Also, if you're wondering about the color filter camera situation, uh, the pl see-through plastics thing, uh, that's disabled in Indian units by default, uh, which I guess is a pretty wise move uh, on OnePlus's part. And uh, if you go into the settings and look for it, you just won't find that photochrome option anymore. So yeah, there you go, a little tidbit for you. Now, battery life has also been pretty good. Uh, yesterday, I started my day at 9.30 a.m. and took the phone off the charger and set the refresh rate to 60 hertz just to see how long will the battery last and at 11 11 pm at night uh, the battery fell down to 27 percent with and gave me about six and a half hours of screen on time which is pretty impressive now that's the benchmark set with 60 hertz the only thing which is left to see is that how how good or bad would the battery perform with 120 hertz and quad hd plus on all the time 
and so far if i am to check it's about 2 pm right now i same took off the phone of the charger today morning at uh, 10 am or 9 am ish and right now the battery is at 56 percent and has given me about three and a half hours of screen on time which is i guess pretty good i have to check about how uh, does it do till the end of the day so yeah if you want to know more about the battery life be sure to follow me on twitter i am i'm tweeting all the time so yeah just do it now warp charger has been terrific it has really impressed me now i'm not a really huge fan of like vook charging and warp charging and proprietary charging technologies i'm all in for the universal uh, usb power delivery standard but nevertheless it definitely impressed me with the results I it was last night and uh, my phone was at 25 percent. I put it to charge and I kid you not, within an hour, my phone went from 25 percent to a full 100 percent, and that's pretty mind blowing. I'm I'm not gonna lie. Uh, so yeah, I haven't been able to test wireless charging yet uh, since I don't have a wireless charger, but that should be pretty soon. But yeah, otherwise, uh, as far as nitpicks go, as far as uh, any complaints. Not a whole lot, just one small nitpick, the optical fingerprint reader, which I've been a fan of and I said it looks pretty cool and feels pretty cool. That is true, but at night when it's all dark, when you try to unlock your phone, it just blasts out this crazy uh, high brightness uh, light, which kind of hurts your eyes a little bit. That's my only silly nitpick in this otherwise seemingly perfect phone. Obviously, these were just my first two days. I really need to thoroughly test the HDR display, really need to test the performance, uh, the speakers which are really good, the Dolby Atmos and all that things. Uh, also need to test the cameras, whole bunch of testing required. Uh, let me know what else you want to see in the upcoming few videos. And yeah, I guess that's basically it. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this fun little video I did for the first time. And uh, subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.